it's just the common facts. I mean, they have a majority in the House, and therefore you need their vote, and they want to get certain things. I, I will tell you this. If you look at before and after, the things they had in there were crazy. Uh, they had things, uh, levels of voting that if you ever agreed to it, you'd never have a Republican elected in this country again. They had things in there about, uh, you know, election days and uh, what you do and uh, all sorts of uh, clawbacks. And they had things that were just totally crazy. Hello, everyone. I'm Lana Zak. Thank you for joining me. That was President Trump on March 30th saying that higher levels of voting would hurt Republicans. Right now, many states are either postponing primary elections or switching to votes by mail. Options all due to the pandemic. But Wisconsin had people go to the polls Tuesday as originally scheduled. The day before, the state Supreme Court blocked an order by Democratic Governor Tony Evers to delay the primary until June 9th. Mary Spacuza joins me now from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She's an investigative journal. She's an investigative reporter for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Mary, you covered an election where people say that they were forced to choose between their health and safety and their civic duty. Can you describe to our viewers what were the challenges in yesterday's election? There were people waiting in line in Milwaukee for as long as two and a half hours or more. Um, a lot of people were wearing face masks or concerned that they might contract coronavirus. Um, they were also just kind of frustrated and confused that the election wasn't delayed. So um, the longest lines were in Green Bay and Milwaukee. Other locations said there really weren't problems. But the voters I talked to were, were pretty worried and pretty frustrated. Would additional time have solved these problems? Well, that, that was a good question because they were like, when will it be safe to go to the polls? When will this coronavirus outbreak end? Um, so really the push from the Milwaukee mayor, the Democratic governor and others was essentially to try to go to a mail only election because they were worried that any kind of mass gathering could spread coronavirus and um, really fuel the outbreak. So that's what they were pushing for. Um, the state Supreme Court sided with Republicans to block that and have in-person voting go forward. Well, let's talk about that voting by mail option. Many voters who actually requested ballots were still waiting to receive them on Election Day. What have voters been telling you about this problem? We've been hearing from dozens, if not over 100 voters, and I, I would say probably hundreds who are in this vote who requested ballots, said that they never received them, said that they called their clerks. Um, the city of Milwaukee actually just called for an investigation today. Um, they want the Postal, in Postal Service to investigate what happened to ballots that were issued um, March 22nd and March 23rd. And it sounds like there are other communities that are expected to follow suit. We're saying that bins of absentee ballots were found at a postal center or that uh, a community near Milwaukee um, said that their ballots were being returned uh, basically unsent to their um, village office. Well, let, let's also discuss uh, the governor's decision at really the last moment to extend the request, uh, the deadline for the request for mail-in ballots. How much did that complicate the situation there? Um, he has struggled to work with Republicans really since he was elected. It's a Democratic governor in a Republican-controlled legislature. They obviously had a much better working relationship with Governor Scott Walker, who um, Tony Evers beat in November. So really, from the time he took office, they tried to they they passed some lame duck legislation to strip away his powers. Um, he had tried to kind of work with them on different changes to voting. They did not go into special session every time he called them into special session. I think he kind of felt like this was all he could do at this point. Um, but I think he also knew that the state Supreme Court is does have a conservative majority and did sign, side with Republicans in this issue. So explain to our viewers a little bit more about that. Why didn't the state Supreme Court allow uh, the governor's request to delay the election to go forward? And do voters there feel like politics were at play in that decision? 
You know, a lot of voters I talked to, and I was at a Washington High School in Sherman Park in Milwaukee's uh, Central City yesterday. Uh, a lot of African American voters who felt like Republicans were trying to keep them away from the polls. There was actually a rainstorm and it was lightning and thunder crashing around us. And I did not see a single voter get out of line. Many of them said that they don't want to give the legislature what they want, which is them to not vote. So um, there was a big state Supreme Court election that was on the ballot. And a lot of voters felt like that was more of a priority for lawmakers to get that state Supreme Court justice reelected. Um, obviously, I was talking to a lot of Democratic voters, and I would say that Republican voters, um, especially some of the suburbs that had no lines and very smooth elections, felt differently. But the voters I talked to were pretty angry. And that's a good point, that it wasn't just Democratic voters trying to decide between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, but that there were other people on the ballot for whom these votes yesterday uh, were really essential. Yeah, we have um, we had a mayor's race, but really uh, the statewide Supreme Court race was a big one. Um, and the, I think that there was fear that if there was a, uh, well, fear maybe from Republicans, that if there was a lot of Democratic turnout to vote for the presidential nominee, that um, that would hurt his chances of getting reelected. So let, let's dig a little bit deeper into that, Mary. Republicans have advocated for both state and national in both state and national courts to try and keep these primary races as scheduled. What ha, what have they told voters, at least rhetorically, about the reason for keeping the elections on the date scheduled in in the midst of a global pandemic? Um, besides just that very overt partisan reason. They basically said that democracy must continue, that uh, voters have gone to the polls during troubled times in the past, and that essentially that, um, you know, democracy couldn't come to a halt because of an election. Um, I do think there were a lot of voters who were scared at the polls yesterday. I was wearing a mask to interview people. I was trying to stand six feet away. I know a lot of other voters were trying to stand six feet away from each other, unless it was a husband and wife. But um, I think that there was fear that somebody was choosing, that people felt they were being asked to choose between their right to vote and their safety and health. And that's, uh, a lot of people felt like it was kind of a sad day in Wisconsin for that reason. And we did hear from senior citizens with existing conditions who said they were just too scared to go to the polls. Was that the overall, uh, the overwhelming feeling then, sadness or anger? And, and have those feelings changed um, now with, with another day in between Election Day and, um, and people really thinking about it a little bit more there? I think that on probably in Milwaukee, there was a lot of sadness, um, some anger. Again, we had some of the longest waits in the state, along with Green Bay. Um, I think that Republicans kind of felt like they wanted to proceed and they wanted to get this election over with. We'll be getting the results on Monday. Um, but I do think that, I think that there is still some frustration and anger that we're hearing from Milwaukee voters and especially with the problems with the absentee ballots, uh, the problems with the long wait lines. Um, there was also a change in whether or not you needed a witness signature. And so some people who actually went got their absentee ballots, turned them in, and followed the federal court's um, guidelines, basically might still not get their votes counted. You know, Mary, I want to ask you one last question, because there are a lot of other states that are now looking at what happened in your state and wondering about the future implication for not only the upcoming primary elections uh, and other elections that are scheduled to take place, but also the general election in November, if we're still in the midst of, uh, of fighting the coronavirus. I'm wondering what advice you would give other states that are contemplating having elections as scheduled or moving to a different system. You know, I know President Trump um, yesterday and today and has been talking about how he doesn't like a mail-in ballot system. He thinks there's too much room for fraud. 
But I do think that if people are still worried about coronavirus come November, that states need to be prepared and be flexible and look at things like mail-only ballots um, if, or drive-through voting. Um, it's tough to be interviewing people at the polls who feel like they're doing the right thing by exercising their democracy, but are worried that they're going to get sick as a result of it. That's true. No one should have to make that choice. Mary Spacuza, thank you. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching CBS and CBS News, always on.